here. I used to complain a little bit when I would go out and I would notice a big difference in how people, just strangers, would treat me when I was not so much dressed up compared to when I was dressed up. And I would specifically compare when I was pregnant. So when I was pregnant and, you know, just in like casual clothes, hair, normal, makeup, none, or whatever. And then those times that I would dress up and people would be like, wow, you're so cute. And they would just like bend over backwards to open the doors and stuff like that. And other times I'd be like struggling, but I wasn't done up and I'd be thinking, oh wow, what an unfair world. And now I look at it a little bit differently because I was probably not putting out the same energy and I never really thought about it. I would just automatically think, oh no, it was the world being unfair. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure most of us act a little different when we feel confident about how we look. So if we're wearing our favorite outfit, if our hair is looking really good this day, or we did our makeup, or we're wearing a new fragrance and we know it smells great and we're walking past people, we have a different energy. There's a little bit more pep in our step. We might be more, you know, head up, actually looking at people, maybe smiling. We're projecting a different energy because we feel good, we feel confident. And so there is something that aligns with how you feel from, you know, those little things you put into how you present yourself that correlates to how people treat you in return. And we're so quick to think it's all face and it's not always face. It's how we put ourselves together as well. You know how we know this is true? All those unconventional beauties, those models with the unusual looks that normally on America's Next Top Model and all these things where it's very commercial, people or growing up, they were teased for whatever they looked like, right? Put them in the clothes in the runway show, give them that opportunity and all of a sudden, wow, the same people that may have been teasing them for having this unusual nose or big forehead, um, being plus size, whatever it is, all of a sudden they're owning it and then they're more attractive all of a sudden because it's an energy, it's a confidence, right? <laughs> Crack the code. I used to carry this almost this feeling of being just timid and scared to really put myself out there wholeheartedly because I was so afraid of hearing she thinks she's all that or you know, who does she think she is? She thinks she's better than blah, blah, blah. And it was a lot of it. I was just like internalizing from other people, hearing other people. And it's because I was just born, you know, falling into some of society's favoritism, light skin, tall, skinny. I think this is something like, it's probably an ongoing thing with me. And I, I still keep working with, at it where I am allowed to exist and feel confident and worthy of opportunities too. And I used to have this feeling of, oh, people are only going to think I got this opportunity because I am light skinned or because I'm skinny or because I'm this and because I'm that. And yeah, I'm sure sometimes those were factors, but I've also put in work <laughs> and I've also not always felt like, you know, the most attractive, the most confident or whatever. Um, so I think we can acknowledge our unfair advantages, but also acknowledge that you also put in work. Um, there's people out there, I know you probably, because we're on social media, and you're thinking they only got that far because of how they look. Of course, we can all argue that there is, you know, conventional pretty. And these are just those unicorns that are just undeniable no matter whether their hair is done, their face is done, whether they're wearing anything that they're dressed up or not, they're just striking and people are gonna look. For most of us, myself included, I gotta put in a little work, okay? I have to put in a little effort. If my, my eyebrows are not on, I'm not feeling that cute and you can probably tell by the way I carry myself. But today, we're gonna talk about some hacks to crack the code and the benefits of pretty privilege. Because if you ask me, pretty is subjective. 
And a lot of this is just radiating from the inside out because if you get that confidence that comes with pretty, that is half of the battle right there, okay? Attracting the things that you want into your life comes from being bold enough to know that you deserve it. And where does that come from? That's like an inner, that's inner work. That's inner work. And so if you're out there feeling like the idea of pretty privilege bothers you, you just got to get on the other side of it and use it to your advantage. Okay, you're not giving yourself enough credit. And if we're getting upset with people for taking advantage of this unfair world, let's be honest, it is not fair that people are treated differently because of looks, but it is the reality. And if you're not choosing to take advantage, that's your choice. We've all got privilege. Everyone has some kind of privilege, right? We're gonna start with how do we present ourselves aside from any exterior thing that's going on? How are we presenting ourselves when we're out in the world? Are we slouched? Are we playing small? Or are we gonna shoulders back, neck tall, present ourselves like we're proud of who we are? Automatically, you're opening your chest you're already saying, look at world, look at me. And you're presenting yourself in a way that is so much more commanding than this. And this is coming from a girl that I was all the tall, I was the tall person growing up. I'm five nine and you know, in dance groups and stuff, always to the back, you go to the back when you're the tall one. And so I kind of grew up feeling like you always had to get duck when you're in photos with people because you were just too tall. And now I've realized that was so silly. You need to own who you are, whether you're tall, you're short, big, small, it doesn't matter. Own it. And I think we do have examples now in media where you see people that are not the stereotypical standard of beauty and how they are thriving because they have this essence and this confidence about them. Who knows if they were born with that confidence? If that confidence is true, if it's an act, it doesn't matter. It's infectious, it's commanding, and it's brought them a lot of success because we own it. And so the more that we stop shrinking and we own that part of us, that unique quality that we have, that's how you can hack the system. I'm telling you, pretty is subjective, okay? So we're using the term of pretty privilege. Really, I feel like it's just all about having pride in yourself. What are we gonna do next? aside again from the physical so we're working on our posture we're gonna speak up this has been hard for me i was always a really shy girl growing up my name is charmaine and i went to school where nobody was named charmaine <laughs> we had the kellys and you know i don't want to name people because the names that were very popular my name was not popular so every time someone would say what's your name i would mumble it I would never say Charmaine and own it. You know how many compliments I've had on my name growing up later on? Oh, that's a beautiful name. But I was, I was so concerned with, it's not what everyone else has, that I would shrink. And I was scared to say it. I'm like, oh, it's too weird. It's too different. All those things about you that you may have thought, oh, it's weird or different. I have a big forehead, whatever it was. Those end up being those things that people find fascinating better posture. We're going to speak up. I'm not telling you you have to smile. You don't have to smile. But I'm telling you that if you're aware of the facial expressions that you're projecting in the world, then you'll have a better idea of how people might perceive you. You know, we always joke about people that have resting bitch face, as they say. And, you know, the implications, like sometimes you might think somebody is really mean or like giving you looks or whatever, and that's just their face and they don't even realize. So when you become a little bit more cognizant of what you may be presenting or projecting and putting out in the world, then you can understand how you can either have disadvantages or advantages just based off of the energy you're putting out there, right? Think about the way someone looked to you the very first time you saw them compared to how they look to you after you've seen them many times. I want to give you an example. Have you noticed that? Let's use celebrities. That way we can all kind of relate. 
Maybe it's the first time you saw this really attractive celebrity and you're just in shock. So you just go through uh, a, was it a rabbit hole of, that's not the word, what is it? Is it a rabbit hole? I can't remember. Of just looking at photos and photos and photos. Maybe it's on Instagram or whatever. And you're just in awe, you're like, wow, I can't believe this person exists. Are they real? What kind of unicorn is this? And then you follow them. And maybe you follow them for a while. That initial feeling, the wonderment, allure of it all eventually goes away it dies down a little bit because you've seen it you've seen it you've seen them and then that initial thing it, it just eventually goes and that's just human nature right when you see something eventually it just you know kind of you get used to it now think about when you've seen someone that you thought was conventionally or unconventionally just super attractive right and then you find out that they're not a good person. Do they not change how they look to you? Do you not, or say it's someone that you know in real life and they left you with a bad taste in your mouth and then do they not all of a sudden look less attractive now that you know what they're really like? And if that's true, can we not say that it's inner work radiating? On the flip side, how about it's someone that you know, you've never really paid attention to, but all of a sudden they've done something that is so touching, whether it's to you in real life, or maybe it's again, a celebrity or something, you just read about it. And you thought, wow, that is, that is so amazing that they did this. And then all of a sudden they become more attractive to you because again, it's something, some inner work that's coming out. Let me wrap this up. But basically I would say, we live in a world where, of course, there are always going to be unfair advantages and everyone has some sort of privilege. Now, as I mentioned, when it comes to pretty privilege, I definitely think energy can take you very far. So if you feel like you can never quite compete in the areas that you're trying to compete in because you are being overlooked, by people that are conventionally pretty. Also, take a look at the energy you're projecting and what else you can really push into the world and accentuate and, you know, all these things that we are, our differences and those things that make us unique are beautiful to people in ways that we don't see in ourselves, right? Okay. You enjoyed our little tea time chat. I didn't drink much tea as usual, but it was fun to just, you know, chat with you guys. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Share your thoughts below. Bye.